recorded quite yet. Unless I already started it, I'm not sure. <laughs> well, you know what? I did start it. You did start it? Yeah, I did start it. Oh, okay. Uh, here with the IBM booth with Bob Zuber. He's going to show us something kind of cool that um, we, they introduced, what, back in March or April? And then back in March, I announced back in March. Sort of an extension of the Intel architecture. It's on the, uh, built off of the Intel Xeon 7500 class. A little bit louder. A little louder? A little louder. <laughs> so it's built off of the Intel Xeon 7500 class processor. We have two brand new rack design and blade design. We don't care about your rack or blade design. About? Not really. So what was interesting about it though, we extended memory outside that's, the limits of the system. That's what I want. Yeah, that's yeah, what I need. So this is the Max 5. It's a memory drawer, one U that plugs into either the 3690 or the 3850. It has 32 dims. Set, which is our memory controller, yeah. and allows customers to connect these two guys together and now allow it to go from 32 dims internally on this box and add an additional 32 dims to get a total of one terabyte in a two socket design. So the thing is, they can get, they've got one server, they get memory constrained, they're doing a lot of virtualization, yes. you can get the extra memory, extra and memory. It, it sees it all as one memory space. Correct, it's all in one memory image. Lead SMP. Yeah. Multiple memory domains, but from the operating system point of view, it looks like one large OS with all that memory. Now the other important thing too though is that memory capacity is one thing, but also the performance of that memory is another thing. That's the thing. That's the 1066, all the memory runs at the same exact speed using the top end processor, it usually runs the 1066. That also runs 1066 externally also. And there's no latency issues between the processor because now the memory controller is on the board itself. So you have no no processor latency going out to that memory. So it's you're using here. But you're using because of your custom chipset, you guys have a high speed interconnect Correct. back to Well we use two system. interconnects. We have both the QPI interconnect, you see here, okay. and also EXA. EXA is your custom EXA is our, our custom architecture. And the beauty of that is it lacks us inter intermix the two to go beyond the limits of what the Intel architecture can do. Go beyond that. Now for that the, the bandwidth point of view too is that the other thing is that not only do you get fast memory, but you get access to a lot more gems. So not having, you know, you can say I have a two terabyte box or a one terabyte machine. But it's also more importantly is that you could actually buy lower cost DIMMs, maybe two or four gigabits memory DIMMs, but you can also go very, very wide. You can actually populate all the DIMMs, and just like the databases in the, in the, in the years past, yeah. you really wanted a bandwidth, you wanted lots of drives. Yeah, lots wide. of spindles. Lots of spindles. The same thing is happening in the memory subsystem. So that's one of the main advantages of why we built the Max 5, was to give these systems not only great capacity internally, but also externally, and more importantly, also the bandwidth now. Okay, that's interesting points. I hadn't heard that, um, but that does make sense. So more dims, we're going to be able to get access quicker yep. to stuff. Again, it's like having a lot of spindles in a big database. Yes, exactly. Okay. And, and from a virtualization point of view, customers they were seeing was that they were limiting their systems because of the amount of memory capacity. Yeah, they're hitting memory right. blocks. Right, they're hitting memory blocks, and then the utilization of that processor was very small. It was like maybe 35 to 40 percent. Now with this design, they can now go higher utilization on the memory side, and also likewise, also in that very expensive resource, the processor, they can actually see higher utilization rates on that also. Okay, now it's a two-way box, a uh, two-way server connected to this. Isn't there a way to do a four-way too? Yeah, so this also connects into the 3850. We have a design up here with all the memory cards internally. It goes 64 DIMMs on X internally. And I get another 32 DIMMs and attach that also to the 3850. And you guys are doing flash uh, storage on yes. these things too, right? Right, so right in here, we actually have the drives are empty, but you actually can pull these out. And there's, in the space of where we used to have four SAS drives, I can interchange it now with solid state technology. They look like little PCMIA adapters that slide in the slots. They're 200 gigabyte and also 50 gigabytes. And now I can add up to eight of these on one, actually on half of an adapter. You can actually do two of these cages simultaneously off of one adapter and get huge increase in speeds. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. About 30,000 yeah, yeah. IOTs per cage. Nice. Very nice. Well, great. Well, thanks, Bob. I appreciate it. Thanks for taking the time. Thank you, Dan. See you later. See you soon.